Welcome to part 4 of our LifeFX hands-on tutorial series. Today we'll go over one of the various ways LifeFX works in combination with Unreal Engine. Let's start by quickly creating a live setup. Go to the LifeLinks menu and enable our camera tracker, then use the quick pass to map the tracker movement to our virtual camera. In the Camera Profiles menu we have stored the profile we created in the previous episode. Just click apply and all parameters of our profile will be applied to our current virtual camera. By pressing hotkey Q we can call up the layer stack. To set our layers to come into view, we'll just set our ground level parameter back to zero. As you can see, the yellow border outline of the layer is now matching with the camera view. Next, let's create a quick garbage mask by going into the canvas menu and adjusting our shape. To get rid of the stuff outside our garbage mask, let's deactivate the primary layer, which is our background feed. Now we'll need to key the green screen. For that, we'll go to the qualifier menu and select the chroma key. Hold the control key and drag across the area where the green is in order to pull a key. Lastly, let's invert the mat and disable the mat view so we can get a better look at our image. We should probably extend the shape at the bottom to keep some safe area in case the camera is tilting. Now the garbage mask follows the camera movement nicely. Let's go back to the LifeFX menu and open the LifeLinks panel. Since this video is about connecting LifeFX to Unreal, let's see what's behind the Unreal LifeLink. LifeFX can send camera tracking and other metadata straight to Unreal using this LifeLink. Just make sure to set the correct IP of the machine running Unreal Engine. You can leave the default port 9001. Hit connect and you're all set. LifeFX is now transmitting camera tracking information via LifeLink to Unreal. The Unreal plugin needed for this can be downloaded directly via the link right here. Let's do a quick recap of the workflow. We're capturing the live signal along with the timecode from the camera via SDI. Simultaneously we're capturing tracking data from the Intel RealSense camera via USB. Now working with Unreal and LifeFX can be done in several ways. Here we're using a second system dedicated to Unreal Engine, which is probably the most common setup. LifeFX is now sending camera tracking data over the network via LifeLink and Unreal is sending its image output based on the tracking information back to LifeFX via SDI. One thing that gets easily overlooked in virtual production setups is timecode sync. We're using an external timecode generator that feeds the camera as well as the Unreal system. LifeFX already receives the timecode via SDI from the camera. Through the built-in AutoSync feature, LifeFX synchronizes timecodes from multiple SDI sources. It's also recommended to use a sync generator to genlock all parties. Now, back to our LifeLink setup. To install the LifeLink plugin for Unreal, download the zip archive via the link in the LifeLinks menu and unpack it. Inside are two versions of the plugin, suitable for different software versions of Unreal Engine. The LifeLink plugin is pre-built for either version 4.26 or 4.27. To install either one, open an existing Unreal project folder, create a folder named Plugins if there isn't any yet, and copy the LifeFX folder right into it. Now you're ready to launch the Unreal project. Let's check into the Plugins panel and look for our plugin. Here it is and it is already activated. Note that it also enables necessary plugins such as LifeLink and Take Recorder, which are required for the use of the LifeFX plugin. It also provides a couple of example files and setups, which we'll go over in another video. Now let's first add a camera into the scene and go to the LifeLinks menu and add a new source, the LifeFX LifeLink. This will forward the camera tracking data captured by LifeFX into Unreal. Next, we need to add a LifeLink controller to our camera in Unreal by adding it as a new component in the details panel of our camera. Now set the subject to be our LifeFX camera and with that, the Unreal camera is remote controlled by the tracking data received from LifeFX. To roughly match the cameras between Unreal and LifeFX, let's fill in the sensor width and height here and disable focus for now. 
Cool. Last thing to do is to tell Unreal to output the camera view via SDI. Once done, click on the capture button to output the image. For more information on how to set up SDI or timecode providers, please refer to the Unreal documentation. Back to the LifeFX system. We now need to get the SDI output from Unreal Engine in. For this, we'll create a new layer and add the Live Capture plugin, which allows to capture any SDI or NDI source. Right now, it is still showing the SDI signal from the camera. So let's instead capture channel 4, which has the SDI from Unreal Engine connected to it. The configuration of VideoIO and how to set up capture channels is shown in part 1 of our series. Now we receive the SDI stream from Unreal. However, it comes in at the wrong size. To change this, let's go to the Fill Map menu, where we can change the scale and some other parameters of a texture used inside a layer. In our case here, the texture is not a file, but the Live Capture plugin showing the stream from Unreal. Since this layer serves the background for our talent, it should not follow the camera movement, but rather be constrained to the camera view. So let's enable Relative Mode in the Canvas menu. Now the layer is basically glued to the lens and does not move around. Now all we have to do is to reorder the layers and put the Unreal Engine layer behind the layer with the key Talent. Done. If we now move the camera, everything should follow. As mentioned earlier, LiveFX has an auto-sync option to sync multiple Live SDI inputs based on timecode. Once we disable it, you can clearly see how the two elements are drifting. So let's rather keep it enabled, shall we? Also available from the LiveFX menu is the Scene Take panel. This is incredibly useful for proper media management. LiveFX also forwards this info via the Live link to Unreal, which I'll show you in a second. Let's stop the SDI output in Unreal for a second and open another scene. Here we go. Let's find the camera used in the scene. In the Details panel, a LiveLink controller is already added. Let's add a new component, the LiveFX Scene Take component. Now Scene and Take of the Take Recorder are controlled by LiveFX. If we go to the Take Recorder panel, Scene and Take numbers in Unreal correspond to what's set in LiveFX. If I now change the Scene number to 45 on the LiveFX system, the number will update right away in Unreal. There we go. By the way, triggering record start stop is also linked via our LiveLink plugin, as you'll see later in this video. Now let's add at least one source to record the camera in the scene and jump back into LiveFX with the new background scene being fed onto the live capture layer. All seems to work smoothly. We can now start to adjust our elements separately. Let's first add some more defined contrast to our talent coming in via the live SDI from the camera. Looks good. Next, let's select the background layer with the feed from Unreal and match it to the foreground talent. Cool, that matches alright. We can of course add a third layer and grade the scene as a whole, for instance by playing with blend modes and layer opacity. Let's add one more layer and give the scene a cold and moody look. Don't forget to enable relative mode so the look layer at all times stays in front of the camera and tweak the grade. By the way, numeric parameters in LiveFX are being changed by clicking and dialing around the parameter itself, just like turning a knob on a grading panel. Holding down shift while dialing makes the movement more sensitive and changes numbers slower. Quickly adjust the talent again, so the blacks are not as crushed and the talent matches better with the background. Good. Once we're happy with the look development, let's record the live comp and grab our physical camera to see if our setup now works. The Unreal scene is also recorded separately, using the same timecode. If certain parts are off, we can refine them after the fact by creating an offline or online composite from the live comp in LiveFX. 
In the next episode, we will show you exactly that and go over the various recording options and how to transfer the whole setup into post. See you there.